historic texts about a pre-Buddhist world we know little about. It's clear the team will need to return, fully document, and ultimately rescue the texts from the crumbling cave. If we get permission to work, this will be the greatest contribution for the Mustang people. It will be a monumental job to sort through, collate, photograph, and then make sense of the manuscripts. Why are they here, in a disintegrating cave in the remote Himalaya? In the next room, a wall painting of Vajra Varai, a tantric deity surrounded by four attendant Buddhist gods. This area has been completely overlooked. This is a treasure trove of historical information, of art, a remarkable repository. So much information about Nepal, so much information about Tibet and all the Himalayan states could be in any one of these caves. And it has not been discovered, and it's lying there waiting for someone to go in, find a way in, and document it. Without permission to remove anything, the team has photographed what they can of the texts. They'll measure each cell to determine how quickly the cave city is eroding. This was 23 and a half from the ground up to where he was. Pete and Renan know it's only a matter of time before all of this crumbles into oblivion. There's only time to explore one more cave. First, we'll pick up art conservator Luigi Fieni. The caves are not the only threatened relics of the past. Mustang's monasteries have suffered years of neglect. The people, they forgot about this monastery. They had stopped worshiping and performing ceremonies here. Luigi is heading up the restoration of Mustang's highest art. I was shocked the first time I stepped into this gompa because the conditions of preservation were so bad that it was really a question mark. How am I going to deal with this? It's been now eight years that I've been working in a project like this, and it's what I consider the work of my life. The secret to Luigi's success has been involving Mustang's people in the process. We had to train the people how to match the colors, how to reconstruct missing parts. So it was really an artistic sensibility that you had to put in the head of people who were farming. And I assure you, it was a, a big challenge. But uh, once I see the result, I'm happy of what they achieved. This is pure Tibetan art from the 15th century. Every square inch is filled with motifs and symbolic designs. Gods are depicted on a precise iconometric template called a mandala, which is a microcosm of the universe, a meditation tool for the believer to achieve oneness with the world. This mandala is of Mahakala, the Black One, a great protector of the Tibetan Buddhist faith. The ring of fire surrounding his head may suggest his ability to triumph over hatred and violence. Simply seeing this mandala helps one feel compassion for other beings. Travel through Mustang is to experience firsthand our temporal hold on Earth. The landscape has been dissolving for millions of years, providing a valuable teaching for those who spend time here. The lesson of impermanence, it's a basic Tibetan lesson. We are born, we live our lives, we die, and we are reborn. It's that birth, death, and rebirth that you see palpably in action here in Upper Mustang. It's almost as if that cycle is the only permanent feature of this landscape, a landscape affected primarily by impermanence, by erosion, and by change and evolution. With only a day left on our permit, we reach a hidden pinnacle at 14,000 feet. We've come here on a tip from a local shepherd who claims he saw art inside a cave here. It's been abandoned for hundreds of years, 
but he found it when he ducked into the cave to get out of a rainstorm. That was 10 years ago. The cliffs have since eroded. The only way in is to rappel down from above. They're masterpieces that stun even Luigi, Brat, and Pete, the most experienced of Himalayan explorers. A 26-foot-long mural depicts individual tableaus of Mahasiddhas, great historical Buddhist teachers. There are 55 tableaus in all. We are not the only ones who found this cave. On the floor are the telltale pug marks of a snow leopard. It was sort of emotional in a way because it's as if the snow leopard had adopted the place as its own. The snow leopard was the last caretaker or guardian for this beautiful gallery of art. There's no evidence of anyone having entered the caves. There was no sign of vandalism. We were the first foreigners to ever enter this cave gallery. Open to the elements, the priceless paintings are remarkably intact. Yet the pigments are flaking off and have become dull and blackened from exposure to natural light. Each panel is unique, representing an individual Mahasiddha and his attendant. They were yogis from all across the Himalaya, known for their magical powers. Some could even fly. It's very surprising to be in this, this high desert very Tibetan landscape and to be seeing what is almost a tropical scene. The yogis' billowing pants and palm trees tell a story about the spread of Buddhism from the Indian subcontinent up onto the Tibetan plateau. Uh, I love these two scenes. They still have most of their colors. Even the way, look here, animals out of space. As if it's flying. And you have here the same with a monkey out of the tree, <laughs> just floating in the air. So we can guess that these are very ancient because they still didn't develop the concept of architecture. Here we have another deer, maybe. Probably they wanted to represent the animals they saw here. I'm not sure about the monkey, but <laughs> this is also unusual. These red lines have been drawn painted just for, to separate the single scenes. And you can see the monkey is just using the separatory line as if it was a tree. Under each panel is an inscription in ancient Tibetan. They will need to be translated by a scholar who can help solve the mystery of why this masterpiece was painted here, how long ago, and for whom. Luigi photographs each panel and its inscription so the work can be carried out digitally later. He'll also do a virtual cleaning to show the world what these masterpieces must have looked like in their prime. He's sure they're from at least the 14th century, predating all the monastic structures of Upper Mustang. They were probably painted in a time when caves like this were the sought-after places Buddhists came to for teachings. Today, the age-old treasure is a teaching about the impermanence of life and fragile art in this crumbling landscape. For us, the treasure is to be able to give the gift of the information, to give the gift of the artwork back to the people to whom it belongs, the people of Nepal, the people of Mustang. That's the treasure that we see, is having the opportunity, not in possessing the things that might exist there. Each one of us has gained a deep respect for those who came on pilgrimage here centuries ago to this impossible land of infinite space. I'm a restorer, I'm not a climber. <laughs> How, what did you think about the climbing? Oh my goodness, there were a few sections. <laughs> The snow was melting together with mud. I was stuck like a cat in a mirror. Just... <laughs> it's our last day of exploration, and Mustang's youngest expeditioners will begin the long journey back down to modern life. Where are you 
guys. Oh, Daddy missed you guys. Of the hundreds of cave complexes in the kingdom of Mustang, in one month, we accessed, explored, and inventoried only 10. We intend to come back because we can only imagine what might still be held inside the countless remaining caves. Somewhere inside these sacred cliffs, where the spiritual is more permanent than the material, lies yet another cave temple, waiting to pass on its ageless teaching to those who come here.